This week's video is sponsored by Parked Pro, filming the Canadian Disc Golf Tour. We will leave a link down in the description where you can get more information on Parked Pro and the Canadian Disc Golf Tour. What's up locals? Uh, back again uh, with our good friend Alex Penny. Uh, Alex, thanks so much for coming back and joining us today. Absolutely, thanks so much for having me. We obviously just got our um, pound bags, uh, the full lineup. So the Rufus, the Octo Thorpe. We've got Alex's Octo Thorpe in this little mix right now, and then the Octo Hall at the end there. We got talking about tournament bags and tournament bag setups recently. What was your tournament bag uh, maybe going into the season and where are you now? Yeah, for sure. So last year um, I was using kind of a mix of the Upper Park Rebel and then right at the end of the year I got the pound bag and made the switch and really haven't looked back. And you've been using the Octo Thorpe? That's correct, yes. Um, I got the uh, Octo Thorpe here used. Um, it's a great bag. I love it. Um, it has a ton of storage. Uh, but, you know, having the opportunity to try the Octo Hall it's just that step up in a tournament bag for what I'm looking for. So a little bit bigger, a little bit more space for my umbrella, my stool, a couple extra water bottles, anything else I'm looking to carry. Totally. So uh, yeah, because we, you know, we were so lucky to have um, Pound send us their entire lineup. What are you getting from a Pound bag, I guess I should say? You know, what does it offer you that's, that's different or that sort of sets it apart? Because I know you've been a real fan of the Octo Thorpe and Pound so far. That's right. And you know, that's a great question, Ryan. And uh, I'm actually going to use a line from uh, our local Calgary Disc Golf Club president, James. Um, Pound makes amazing backpacks. And you know, when I'm out on the course carrying this around, it's light, it's comfortable. Um, I love the lifetime warranty behind it. I love the features that they've put into the bag that make it great, not only as an everyday bag, but as a tournament bag. You know, the replaceable shoulder straps, um, you know, some innovations in regards to the inserts, uh, more pockets. It's uh, just been something that's real comfortable to carry around and I really haven't looked back. Absolutely, cool. So, you know, from using my Octothorpe day in, day out, a couple of things I noticed when I first got the Octo Hall um, is these pockets on the side, they have the buckle so you can buckle those in so the pocket flap isn't just um, free out in the wind. Um, on the front side, they have the little scorecard pocket, something that's, you know, good if you're running a manual scorecard or if you're in somewhere with poor service like a lost egg in Drumheller or sometimes out in Falcon's Flight. Um, there are some areas with some questionable cell coverage. Uh, great opportunity to run that manual scorecard and then just, you know, like I said, the space. Uh, being able to fit a couple extra discs in there if you're worried about losing your uh, disc over water. Um, maybe you have a couple more utility discs that you want to work in for a tournament just in case you have a weird scramble situation. I've never, you know, <laughs> I've never thought of that. I always watch bag reviews and see people talk about the scorecard holder or, you know, the, the spot for a pencil and the spot for a scorecard. And I'm thinking, I use u disc like why would That's that right. ever be a thing? Like why are we still focusing on a manual scorecard? And I would not thought about the dependence on like cell reception to, you know, fuel U-Disc, I guess. I, I've not been in that situation, so good good point for sure. Uh, and I guess, you know, for us, uh, having chatted with uh, Levi about, you know, his vision and their goals, you know, around uh, sustainability and, you know, this idea that, you know, if you have a warranty, we, we're, we live in a world where we're just used to having to, we submit for the warranty and they just send us a brand new one and we've just, this has kind of become normal and you know, it's unfortunate that for a lot of companies it's actually cheaper to do that than to repair. And uh, it, the thing that stood out to us in our conversations with Pound was, you know, that it's, there's a reason for trying to make a product of this quality and that's, you know, repairable rather than replaceable. And, and, and that really spoke to me. For me, I, I, I've said it in a couple of other uh, first looks at these bags and things already, but uh, I love the firmness of these straps. The fact that they just stick out, they're just like, just sort of asking to be, you know, fully put on. And I've, I've mentioned it before, but I just keep kind of going back to it. Most of the bags I've used, you know, the, the straps sit like almost completely flat down. And you know, as you can get one arm in, but you're always kind of fishing around to try to get that other one. These arms stick out so far that it just kind of pops right on and it's so easy to wear. And I, I would always lazily not wear a backpack fully. Like I'd always just kind of one strap it because I thought I, 
can't be bothered and by the time I get to my shot I'll be fumbling with this thing and it's so you know the straps are easy the fabric on the back here um, really great for uh, you know being a bit um, probably absorbs a little bit and is quite cool as well and uh, the other thing that always has stood out with me is coming from a grip bag you know I thought well how could you have a bag that doesn't have rails or feet like you know it, the bottom's going to break out of it and again because we got used to bags like grip or uh, upper parks doing upper park feet, feet as well. yeah yep. So, you know, it's kind of become the norm that these bags offer feet and now we expect, well, it's, you know, the bottom's not going to be that great or it's going to, the bottom will, you know, eventually wear out. And in the time that Pound has been a company, they told us that they've not once replaced a bottom on a bag. They've never had a bag claim for the bottom. So he said, you know, we would do rails or feet if we felt like it was necessary, but we also feel like, you know, Without those features on the bottom, you know, it. I think more probably for the rails. The feet, I don't think it would have as big of a, a big of a difference. But the the rails can maybe be a bit of a comfort thing because you obviously have to affix them to the bottom of the bag somehow, and you know maybe that leads to more of a rigid frame, you know, like a grip bag, where you know comfort is obviously a, a huge part to this bag. Would you agree with that too? I would agree with that. Yeah, I've I've used this in some very technical wooded course, very hilly courses as well, and. I have not had any issue in regards to the bottom or the need for a rail or feet. And like you said, I think, you know, functionality of the bag and, you know, just the, being able to transport it around, have it be, you know, a little bit more compa compact mm -hmm. um, is a great feature to it. So For sure. You were mentioning the uh, stool holder on the front today. That's right. Uh, yeah. Recent discovery. I will admit I, I hadn't uh, picked up on that initially either. Uh, that I guess the Thorpes and the Halls have it, the Rufus does not, but um, might, be, might be too small on the, on the Rufus anyway, but uh, you, you carry a stool? I do, yes. So yeah, when I'm playing, a, especially a tournament, not so much the casual rounds, mm -hmm. um, but in a tournament, you know, it's nice to have the stool, even, uh, you know, kind of my way in some courses to keep my bag off the ground is to put my stool down and put my bag right on top. So definitely, um, it's nice having that feature in there and then still having space to put in a big golf umbrella if I need a little bit of coverage from the sun or the rain. I thought it was really interesting too. This was, I think, the first bag I've seen that has uh, a place for a water bladder. And that was that was new to me, and I, I hadn't even thought to do that. And I, I kind of love that idea in the sense that, you know, if you're carrying one of the larger bags, you know, it just gives you that much more sort of freedom on in those in the side pockets here, you know, which you uh, typically either have, you know, uh, water bottles in or even just the fact Alex was talking about with the, the bag that he's got, you know, it didn't, his didn't as a used one, it just didn't come with these little you know, this side little insulated little cooler pack here. And while the cooler pack would be great for water, if you are using a bladder with one of the larger bags, and there is actually a spot on the Rufus as well, uh, one of the side compartments, you can, you can put a, a water bladder in there. But we were just talking before we came out to film about playing glow rounds in the winter, you know, here in Canada. And, you know, I usually have I usually have like my left glove on as a right-handed thrower and then I've got like a hand warmer in my right pocket um, but there's times during the round where you know I either want to put that right glove back on or mitt and or have my hand warmer and having just some little deep pockets especially if you've got water using like a water bladder you know these deep little pockets are so perfect for gloves or for a hand warmer you know all these sort of you know quirky items that we use here for our winter golf but it does give you some nice versatility and the nice thing too is you can pop them out and you know this will fit um i don't know probably i want to say four maybe five discs i I've think got... i can fit four kind of mix of discs pretty comfortably if i go down to drivers uh maybe five or six and with the octo hall those pockets are just a little bit bigger so are they too yeah perfect that much more space yeah so that's three four four putters here i could probably over time, I could probably work in there. That is five. It's a little tight. I don't know if I'd use, probably wouldn't use five, but four, four fits comfortably. And uh, should we just try it on yeah, yours, we'll see what we can fit in? Yeah, we can try mine or the hall. That's a Thorpe though, right? This is a Thorpe, yeah. So this is, is this, hall. so let's try the hall. 
Oh yeah. Just that much more. I bigger, think it just is. That yeah. Much larger. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. That's that's five comfortably, and I could pr uh, might be able to squeeze six, but that's six putters. That's you know, those are thicker. Which you know, obviously, if you've got drivers on one side, you're probably going to fit you know six, six or seven. Yeah, they definitely those side pockets definitely are a little bit larger, and uh, even just these little side straps here to be able to like sort of cinch it up so that that's you know right. you can get it to the to the right size for for your needs. Anything else to add before we wrap up? No, I think that covers it off. I think, you know, you can hit on some key points, Ryan, about the sustainability side of it and the great work that Levi and the team at Pound are doing to, you know, manufacture a bag that's long lasting as well as, you know, offering those op options for sustainable repairs. And, you know, the other thing I like is the option to purchase a Rainfly, uh, purchase those insulated side pockets. So even if you, you know, buy a bag used, those uh, additional components to make your experience better with Pound are there and you just got to check out the website. Definitely and on top of that which we haven't really even talked about is like the customization. Uh, if you want to go you know to the truck obviously with with companies like Grip you've got your black your gray you know maybe there's a you know a touring professional version of that bag you know Grip has the Chris Dickerson there's the Paige Pierce line I'll give you, you know, sort of like a customized version of the bag, but uh, the color choices and customization on Pound's website, if you're looking for a bag to, you know, meet the colors of your club or, you know, whatever you need is, <laughs> the customization is incredible with Pound. So you can get a stock bag, save a little bit of money that way, but you can also go the custom route. And if this is a bag that you know you're gonna have for a long time, and that's exactly what these bags are built for, uh, it can be really fun to go on there and, and customize some colors as well. So I uh, just wanna say real quick, thanks Alex for joining us again. We love having you on and your insights are always so appreciated. So uh, we'll be uh, back for more testing with these bags. We've got some comparisons coming up uh, with some other sort of comparable companies uh, with models that would you know be a good comparison to these so thanks alex as always for Thank joining for us uh be sure to check out this video up here and we will see you in the next one this is local we are local